Now that we know about the polar form of a complex number, or mod arg form as it's sometimes called, we can use it as a really powerful instrument to understand complex numbers on the complex plane. We're already starting to think about the visuals of how these numbers exist in a two-dimensional space, and mod arg form, polar form will help us understand what's going on even better. Uh, complex numbers, and particularly what happens when complex numbers interact with each other, like when you multiply or divide them. So we're gonna have a look at these questions from the assigned exercise, but I do want to point out on this very first question, uh, it will look a little bit different to the question that was actually assigned to you because I've made some slight modifications to this question, which will allow us to not just work out what the answers are, but also dig into what the answers mean. So I'm not just going to go ahead and calculate the solutions here. I'm also going to try and unpack like some generalizations of what these principles, you know, Z, Z bar, minus Z, uh, all those kinds of things mean in mod arg form, not just for this particular Z, this particular complex number, but for complex numbers in general. So let's have a look at this. Given the z equals 1, take away root 3i, express in mod arg form, in polar form. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out is polar form, mod arg form, it's in terms of the modulus and the argument, the distance from the origin, and the angle of rotation from the positive side of the real axis up to wherever your complex number is. Now because all that stuff that I just said, um, distance, angle, they're all very visual things. The first thing I'm going to encourage, even though the question doesn't state that you have to do it, is we should draw a diagram. We should get a complex plane here and plot our complex number onto this complex plane so we have an argand diagram. So, one take away root 3i, where is that roughly? Well, if I start to put on some um, scale here, let's say uh, if one is about here, I'm going to call it, uh, that would make a uh, negative 1 here, negative 2 here, and negative root 3 is about negative 1.7. So I'm going to place z around here. Actually, let's change that into a more helpful color. So uh, this is where I'm going to place z, and I want to express where z is, not just in terms of its rectangular form. Um, as we just said, it's one unit to the right, and then it's uh, root three units downwards on the imaginary axis, the imaginary direction. I want to know where is this uh, in terms of its distance from the origin, which is uh, this distance in here. And then also I want to know what is the angle of rotation I have to go through from the positive real axis axis down to that, um, I guess it's like the radius of the circle that I sit on whose center is the origin. Okay, so let's go ahead and work out these two pieces. The modulus is easy to start with, so when we say the modulus of z equals, we have our formula for it. However, I do want to point out, um, the formula just comes from Pythagoras' theorem. So if you're pretty handy with Pythagoras' theorem, and if you get handed nice numbers, like the ones we're about to be shown here, um, then you sort of don't need to go through all of these details to work out what the answers are. But let's go ahead and just make sure we have the right things down. Um, if I call this a number um, a plus bi, that's our standard rectangular form, uh, or you know, real imaginary form if you prefer that, then I'm just going to take a squared plus b squared. These are the two sides, uh, shorter sides of the triangle, the right angle triangle in which the modulus of z sits. Um, I just want 1 squared plus negative root 3 squared. That's just a and b. Uh, you can see of course you're going to get 1 out of 1 squared and 3 out of negative root 3 squared, so therefore you're just getting the square root of 4, which of course is 2. So that tells us uh, that this distance in here is 2, so there's our modulus of z, there's the first half. And now, what about our argument? Well, uh, again, these numbers have been chosen for you to be nice and neat, so when you think about this right angle triangle, the fact that it has a shorter side there of 1, and another shorter side there of root 3. Um, to get the angle, I, I can think about, well, in this right angle triangle, what is the angle that makes sense of this? This is just the 1 root 3 2 triangle on our standards triangles. So in fact, hopefully you can see and you know your exact values sufficiently to say that angle is size pi on 3, 60 degrees, right? You can even see, you know, this must be the 30, this must be the 60, this must be the 90. Um, like I said before though in an earlier lesson, it's important that we do everything in radians, which is why I said pi on 3 from the outset. Uh, it will come a little more apparent later on why radians matters so much and why we really should do it in this form. Now before I go ahead and write down pi on 3, I notice that the direction of the angle matters. So whether I go uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise is important when we're describing where the number is. If I went pi on 3 radians 
anti-clockwise from the real axis, uh, the positive real axis, I'd be going up in this direction, right? I wouldn't be going down to where Z actually is. So the way we would say this is to say that arc Z is going to be negative pi on three, and that's the direction it's gone in. Uh, clockwise is negative in this scheme. So therefore, I've got my modulus, got my argument, I can say, say therefore that Z equals uh, two outside of cos negative pi on three plus I sine negative pi on three. So there it is, that right there, that is Z in mod arg form, and I'm gonna use that as the basis for trying to work out all the rest of my numbers. Okay, so let's now have a look, that was part A. Let's have a look at part B. We'll continue right here. All right, now I want a Z bar. This is the conjugate of Z. Now, before I start thinking about, you know, calculating all my different things, you know, with my modulus, my argument, all that, um, I think that the visual setup that we had putting these things onto the complex plane is really going to help us, right? So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm only going to copy this because it's gonna get real busy real fast when I start to put B, C, D, E, and F all in the same diagram. So this is just for the sake of clarity. So I'm gonna duplicate this down here. And let's think about where would Z bar, where would the conjugate of Z sit on this diagram? Well, very simply, I can, I can just state by definition that Z bar equals not one minus root three I, but one plus root three I. So it's just taking that imaginary part and flipping the sign to be its opposite. Um, however, if you have a think about this, um, I have a meaning for where that is on the complex plane. That's going to be on the opposite side of the real axis. So if I grab another color here, um, if, if Z is down here, then Z bar is gonna be up here. So therefore, I'm gonna place that over here um, and I'm going to draw the, oops, not there, not the laser pointer. I'm gonna draw this guy up here to indicate what's going on here. So this, this is Z bar. Now hopefully without any further calculation or anything like that, you can see that the modulus of Z bar is gonna equal the modulus of Z. I'll say that like so, modulus of Z bar equals the modulus of Z. And that's because that reflection upwards um, preserves the size of what's going on, right? So whereas I went to uh, down in that direction before, now I'm going to up in this direction. So I can say those moduli, that's the plural, are the same. But when it comes to the angle, something is different. Um, I have the same size of angle, I would say the same magnitude, but it's going in the opposite direction. So instead of negative pi on three going this way, I'm gonna have positive pi on three going this way. Anti-clockwise is positive on the complex plane. So what I can say is that the argument of Z bar is going to be um, the opposite negative of the argument of Z. Right, which in this case, we went from uh, negative, negative pi on three is gonna become pi on three. So therefore, I can say Z bar equals, let's write it in R cos theta plus I sine theta form, that's mod arg form. Uh, you're gonna get the same two, same modulus as before. Uh, and then I'm going to write in cos of pi on three plus I sine pi on three. Okay, so far so good. So there was the original number, there was the modulus. Now let's have a look at part C. Uh, negative Z, negative Z. Okay, so I am, just like before, I'm going to, uh, actually I need the whole diagram, don't I? Let's grab this whole thing up here. Copy this whole thing with the original Z on it. And have a think about where is uh, minus Z going to go? Well. Just like before, let's think about this just numerically first, and then we'll have a look at where that goes onto the diagram. So uh, negative Z is going to be, if I just take uh, one minus root three I, and I'm gonna apply a minus sign to the whole thing, so it's gonna be minus one plus root three I. There we go. So where's that going to go? Well, um, our original number was down here in the fourth quadrant, but this number here, you're gonna to go to the left, so I'm going that way, and then I'm gonna go up root three I. So you can see um, I'm on the opposite side rotationally, right? So if I pop my uh, minus Z up here, 
you can see what's going on here. I've just literally uh, rotated around, or if you want to think about it that way, you've reflected across, but what you've reflected across, you have to be quite careful with actually. Um, you've reflected across this line here. Reflection requires a line, not just a point. So it's tempting to say the origin, but you have to be very sneaky with that, right? So where is this guy in terms of my argument and my modulus? Well, just like before, starting to get sick of this, right? Um, the modulus is the same. The modulus of negative z equals the modulus of z. And hopefully, as soon as you write that, you're like, ah, oh, of course that's true. Because th this is part of why we have the absolute value notation that we've used for the modulus. Doesn't matter if you're facing in that direction or that direction, uh, you know, a direction or its opposite, that doesn't change the difference, which is just like in real numbers. The absolute value of 5 is the same as the absolute value of negative 5. So um, that's the same. My, my r in r cos theta plus i sine theta is not going to change. But then you have to think about, well, what about my argument, okay? Now, in this case here, the argument, just like in all the other cases, is going to come from the positive side of the real axis and then rotate anti-clockwise. So it's going to look like this. This is the angle, okay? Now, it is in the positive direction because I'm going anti-clockwise, but uh, this angle here is um, something sort of indirect from this pi on 3. Can you see this, I've just labeled it in green, this green angle plus this orange angle, um, they clearly constitute a straight angle together when you add them up there, adjacent, and uh, they give you the pi radians that means a, a full sort of, uh, full turn in the opposite direction, right? So therefore, if this is pi on 3, and this must be the supplement of pi on 3, they add up to pi radians. Therefore, I can say uh, the argument of z plus the argument of negative z, they should equal pi. So another way of saying that is the argument that I actually want, the argument of negative z, um, is equal to pi take away arg z, and in this case, arg z, as we um, sort of pointed out, it's going to be the, the size of it. I should say it's kind of like the absolute value of these guys, right? Because you've got to watch out for the direction that these all go in. Um, you don't want to be adding and subtracting negatives. Um, here, this is just going to be pi on 3. That makes this, this other part here, the orange part, 2 pi on 3. So I can say the argument of negative z in this case is 2 pi on 3. So putting these things together, uh, stay with this color, this guy here, um, and the fact that I already know the modulus from before it was 2, um, I can say, therefore, I can write negative z in mod arg form as 2 outside of cos 2 pi on 3 plus i sine 2 pi on 3. Okay, so um, a way of uh, saying saying this as well is that we could have put this, we could have put the, uh, you know, the, the pi's inside because that's what we're really calculating. It's pi um, and the difference from uh, whatever original angle, whatever original argument you started with. Okay, so uh, what have we got so far? Well, uh, if we take our original number and we say, okay, um, you've got some angle here. To go over to the uh, conjugate, you're taking the opposite angle. So I guess the way we could have said that is, uh, let's use this color. I could say in general for some r uh, cos theta, i sine theta, like so, um, you're going to get for the uh, conjugate of z, it's the same modulus, but what happens to the angle, it's going to be opposite, right? So it'll be negative theta plus i sine negative theta in this case. And then what happens down here? Well, the whole idea is that um, if you say negative z, you're going to again have the same modulus. But what happens to the angle? Well, it's going to be the supplement, right? So it's going to be pi uh, take away your theta whatever that happened to be, um, up, up here, right? Um, and you've got to be really careful here because you've got these negatives. So when I say theta, um, I really should put the absolute value signs around it. So I just need the size of that angle. Uh, plus i sine of pi take away absolute value of theta. 